hello guys god bless you and welcome again to my youtube channel thank you for liking and subscribing to my previous videos and this uh, video is going to be about our calling as parents and so yeah before i go into the video let's uh, let's let's uh, take an introduction from you Who hi you? my name is chris this is my wife crystal uh, we have two beautiful children and a dog and uh, that is yeah. our happily little family and we all love each another and we're very happy to be doing this video and sharing with you guys the feedback that you guys are going to be giving us on being parents yes yeah, so mm -hmm. as i said we're going to do this video on our calling to be parents in Christ, in the body of Christ, everyone is called, and the the most expected thing we are called to is to love. So we are called to love our children, and we are called as parents to love our children. So it's as easy as that. Sometimes people can over emphasize or over spiritualize what your calling can be. You can you can be called to cooking. You can be called to anything. So on this subject, we're going to just talk about our calling. Yeah. yeah, so it's just about understanding your children, uh, about taking time with them and just showing them love, joy, peace, happiness, laughter, you know, being excited, just being a child, how a child should be, very, you know, energetic, playful, want to interact, get involved, help them to evolve their imagination as a young child of them to you know develop on certain skills skills sorry and strategies that they may know or may not know just to encourage them to um you know be free um be happy and enjoy what they're doing and hopefully you know it's safe as well which is important safety is a, is a big big factor in child life because they have bumps and clumps they get themselves involved in um you know they don't know how to deal with certain pain and um, when they you know, have a little knock or a little mm. bump and uh, it can be quite um quite frustrating for them because they don't know half the time that whatever it is they're doing it dangerous. is dangerous Hence why being a parent, you have to be more on the safe side now, uh, especially for having children, you, you're that little bit more protective, that little bit more concerned. So you want to just, you know, uh, it's not like you're going to pick them up every time they cry or every time they hurt themselves. You're just going to explain to them that, look, if you do it another way, or be careful or look or focus and think what you're doing, you know, having these slow conversations with them uh because it happens we speak fast sometimes they don't quite get what we're saying because we're too quick mm -hmm. so we have to learn ourselves as parents to slow down a notch mm -hmm. to um you know let them understand what is going on and what is occurring i read i read something i read um in an article about how to communicate with a child so obviously a child is like this high and it says when they whenever we're talking to them we should go down to their level and mm -hmm. so we can have eye to eye contact so because if we're loading over them they're going to grow up to be scared of of us as parents we don't want them to be scared of us as parents no no yeah, they just need to know that um with their with with anything that happens we're we're on we're on the same journey you know, as parents, we're there to guide them and help them improve on anything and everything they want to learn. And obviously, learn from our own individual mistakes and implement that in a way that we've done this not quite correctly as it should be. But now we know what we've done that isn't, you know, the right way. We can help them to... Um, improve on what we potentially made faults on in the past 
Yeah, and we can say sorry to our children as well. We're not that high and mighty as parents where we don't where we feel like as if we can't apologize to our children. I'm sorry, that was wrong of me. Like that's a good good thing. Yeah. It's a learning curve for them and it's also a learning curve for us because we do make mistakes. It's it's the way of life. It's just dealing with them is, is the main factor. Mm. Yeah. It's just, you know, showing them how I don't know, like cooking something, and sometimes you're on a frying pan and the spit hits you, and you're like, ah, that hurt. <laughs> so, to avoid that, if you know it's high, it needs to be cooked at a high level, step back, and then therefore you shouldn't get spat out from a frying pan. You know, keep your distance, it's safety, it's hot, it's cooking. Um, you know, protect yourself at all times. Uh, make sure you keep your distance. It, yeah. it does go quite high when, you, when you've got it on a, on a. Yeah, there there are millions of people, mil, actually million of children, mm -hmm. even in this country that are not um that are not safe in their home. Like there are research out there that proves that children, um, are unsafe and children who haven't got any safeguarding, guardians or parents to look after them, or just millions of children who are actually facing poverty and stuff like that. In the home, like poverty, have a big effect on on a child's mind because if we as parents are supposed to be able to provide, and if we can't provide, it's going to make them feel inadequate. Yeah, for the most part. They, 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 don't, they don't know the difference between you know how someone can provide and someone who can't provide who's struggling. They don't they don't know that. Um, it's not that they need to know, but it's good for them to understand that, okay, times were difficult for my parents. Yes, they done their best. Yes, they done what they could to help them grow. Um, and it's just, it's just about giving back and supporting really, and just, you know, making sure they understand like, it's not just our little bubble, it's everyone's bubble everyone can help everyone literally no matter what what circumstances they go through just about being a team player being supportive helping people through the good times and the bad times you know she's showing them it's, it's basically expressing their mind um a mind can you know work in many different ways it's not just stuck in one trap it's you know you can explore and um understand what people need help with or going through or supporting or just you know being a good good person in general yeah there's a saying that says charity start charity starts at home so mm. i think that's what you're, you're trying you're highlighting that charity starts at home the, the the treatment that you want for your child in out outside of your home is the, is the same treatment that you should give them yeah. in the home where they should because we foster our children to to help to be helpful around the home, to have good manners, and to just learn the basic things that a child should know. Yeah, when they reach a certain age and they and they and they seem like they want to do it. Most children at age three, four, five, they're very helpful. Uh, our, our two in particular are helpful. Our eldest one, she's always trying to support and help, and even get her hands dirty. In regards to like, oh, I'll help you change your nappy. Although she can't do it, but she's 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 figured it out. Oh, mum and dad changes, you know, children's nappies because they need to be changed. Let me help and mm. you know grow up. Yeah, it's not wrong to to involve them in tasks. I think that's a good good principle, and we're not enslaving them. We're not making them do it out of their own will. It's just like an encouragement, like load the washing machine, help with putting the dishes away and stuff like that. Because yeah. I've seen parents where they they allow their child to be slave to them. Like and because they're parents, so the children have to come in and when they're saying hello, they have to go and bow to them. I'm like Yeah, it does happen. Are. Yeah, it does happen. It's not the right thing to encourage your kids to do that and don't let it become a a bad habit. A lot of people, the kids are at a certain age. Oh, you can do this for me now, you can do that for me now. It's not fair for them to keep doing a hundred mm. jobs or all your chores. They're still a child, so they still need to have that enjoyment. If you take that enjoyment away from them, 
and all I'll ever do is just chores, chores, chores. It's just like, yeah, okay, it's good, they're learning, but where's the joy, where's the love, where's the, where's the gap, where's the break, you know? So when you do um, eventually, you know, encourage your children to do things, they're not for you, they're with you. You do it together. So it's not every day they have to do a chore. It's just slowly but surely creeping them into a chore that you do together. Um, and it's just respect as well as what it is. You're showing them respect, they're showing you respect. Or you can say, look, you're just showing them love, they're showing you love. It's just about um, working together, really. What's one of the What's one of the things that you enjoy most about being a dad? I think for me is um, it's it's when they smile. It just makes my heart melt. It's just you know it's so overwhelming sometimes, but in a positive way. Um, like you're seeing your own child develop and grow up and 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 be mm. mature. And I think for me, because we've got an elder one, he's three, and the youngest one is uh, eleven months. She's always trying to help. I mean, Chris and I are normally very helpful anyway in general, not just with family, but with a member of public and, and in the community. Uh, we like to go out of our way and support others. Mm. But uh, I think uh, our, our eldest one has noticed that mum and dad always share and do things and help. And she, that's why she's trying to get more involved with the younger brother to like help him walk and change nappies. Yeah. And, and uh, so obviously it has, a, it has a rub on effect. She can see what we're doing in terms of helping and she trying to you know follow some similar similar steps so uh yeah she's doing fantastic with, with what she does you know her speech is improving um her activities her concentration is good it's just like i say it's all about just having that time with them and it's important to have that time with them um and it's also important to have that little gap and break from this so they can you know, they can't always rely on mum and dad will help, always do this, always do that. Obviously, we'll do as much as we can, but if we keep doing it, it's going to be a norm to them. They're going to get used to it, like, um, dad does it for me, I don't have to worry. True, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So don't fall in that trap where the children think, oh, they're always going to do this, they're always going to do yeah. that. They have to realise. They shouldn't be independent. Well. Yeah, yeah, they can. They can. You just have to. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I have a, a routine that I do. With Celine, so Monday, Tuesday to Sunday, she's got a routine: a.m., p.m., bedtime, and and things like that. And sometimes throughout the day, I would play with her. Now that she's not at nurse because it's the it's, it's school, um school holiday. College, summer holiday, but during the day we 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 play together. We do we go out together, and then sometimes I'll say to her, "You need to play on your own for five minutes," and then she goes, "Okay, mom." And I said, you need to play anyone for another five minutes so she can start working on her own and, you know, yeah, enjoy. You, yeah, use her imagination. Yeah. But yeah, she'll play with her dolls for hours and do role play and things like that. She's into role play and mm -hmm. play doll. Just try and use um, some structure or some guidelines. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be every week. But at least put some stepping stones in. Don't overdo it, don't overload it where they can't do it and they'll physically struggle because they've not been shown or you're shown once and you think they're going to know. You have to show them numerous times for them to eventually get it. Patience will pay off eventually. So, um, yeah, when you're giving them a task to do or something to do, just show them a few times, spend time with them doing it and then slowly but surely you'll realise you'll step back and they'll just do it on their own. And that's in the in, in itself a is, is a, yeah it's an, it's an amazing achievement um, for a young child to you know don't worry mom don't worry dad I can do it you showed me enough times I know how to do it. and if they get it wrong that's fine that's fine you help them till they get it right no one's going to be perfect but it's just about helping supporting and being there through the challenges that occur in life with children yeah. And I said, I prayed to God and I said, Lord, help me to love my children unconditionally. Because I knew that when I was growing up, I didn't experience that type of love. So I had to like ask the Lord for, for that love just so I can love. Because children will do things, they will, they will test you to your limits. And during those times, I don't want to feel like I need to treat them badly like the treatments I, I was given. 
So yeah, my my aim is to love to love them unconditionally, and to learn what learn what that looks like. So when they're misbehaving and stuff like that, I can go to them and talk instead of like battering them, mm. <laughs> like the old back in the days way used to get a battering. But nah, that's not the way. They need to learn like from the mistakes in a gentle way. I would it's just talking to them and if they don't quite get it and you're talking to them and you're explaining it to them like slowly they'll get it in their dreams they will get it just to show them if you can't talk to them about it show them express do a picture do a drawing because if you do a drawing a little sketch you'll say oh this is mom and dad this is blah 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 the picture will show what you're trying to implement if they don't get it through words um because quite a lot of parents use some words and the kids like, huh? Yeah. So if you draw something, it doesn't matter if you're not the creative. If you just write it on a piece of paper, they'll they'll they hopefully show a vision and use their imagination with it and think, ah, well that's that, that's that. I Me, mean, I'm more practical. I am so that's how I you know do things uh, with my children. Be more practical with them. Crystal's more so the uh, the talker, shall we say. Um, yeah, some some will prefer talking, some will prefer to show them, and uh, they're both fine either way. It's just you know your children better than anybody. You know, you're always going to love your children regardless, um, even when they're 36. They're <laughs> still a child, still a baby. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I think it's to do with learning styles. Everyone's got different learning styles. Some people are audio learning, some people are visual learning, and some people are kinesthetic learning. Um, you, know, you can implement both of them. They'll pick up one quicker than the other. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. There's, there's no right or wrong way. Um, but it's just like I say, it's having that interaction with them. And also, it's, it's, it's about them as well as children interacting with other children. Mm -hmm. uh, let's face it, guys. Not every child, a golden child, shall we say. A few childs, a few children, sorry, have a few pickups along the way. So, but they need to go. You need to have that sorry interaction with other children, i.e., going to the park, going to town centre, so they can realise and, and see what other children are doing, whether it's right or wrong. Mm. Obviously, we're not here to judge any of the parents on their skills. You know, it's just about showing your child maybe that bit's right, but that bit isn't, and this is how we can work on it together. As simple as even if they start snatching things from each other, chopping things across the room. You can literally say to them like, no, you don't tr throw things across the room, or no, don't snatch, please. Can you just, you know, do things gently and stuff. I think before I before I was before I realized that parenting is about talking mm -hmm. <laughs> to your child. Yes. I used to find it weird, like like when I used to live in Jamaica and I used to like watch TV, and the parents were like, no, no, Oliver sit down and they're having Oliver's having a ten a tantrum and he's falling and the parents are like no Oliver sit down <laughs> is that I was like huh no you hold the boy and say sit down <laughs> <laughs> and if he's not listening you go oi Mr sit down pray <laughs> obviously that doesn't happen you know <laughs> but like uh, oh yeah. parenting Ah, it's up to you. <laughs> you can choose how you want to parent your child. But your child is supposed to really nurture them and love them. I can't, if I'm back, I, for the life of me now, I'm ha hallelujah, I'm not that type of slap in your face type of parent. No. It happened, it happened in the olden days, and that was the only way of punishment. But nowadays, punishment. There's more to it than hitting your kid because he doesn't get you anywhere. He doesn't achieve anything, let's be honest. Although you think, I give him a beating. They'll, they won't do it again. They will. Yeah. They'll test you, they'll push you. They do it more, and yeah. then they'll be like, you beat them, and they're like, oh, this isn't better. Yeah, yeah. You've only beaten me, so yeah. I'll just bear the beating and so still be bad. So the best thing is, is don't always use the word no, because any time a child does something wrong, you go, no, that's bad. No, that's not. I'd encourage you not to say no. I encourage you more to, okay, why did this happen? What made you think? What made you react this way? Mm. It's almost like you're talking to them like they're a grown up. Because mm. if you continue to say, no, 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 this is wrong, it's bad, it's bad, mm. they're going to think everything's bad, they do. Mm. 
Do you know what I mean? A lot of people will criticize more than they'll give positive feedback. So the whole world like it. No, bad, no, no, you do my head in, no, I'm not having it, no. Mm -hmm. It's about, look, you've done wrong, yes, I've acknowledged that. Let's overcome and, and talk about why you've done it and what caused you, you know, why, when, what, mm -hmm. how, all that. Yeah. yeah. And um, then they'll get an understanding then, of, like they'll break it down. So when they become angry again, they'll think, all right, what's the reason why I'm angry? What's yeah. caused it? Why is the behavior changed? Why are they not listening? And by that, by them certain points, you know, and as they got older and you spoke to them, they'll understand and they'll assess it more in their brain. They'll, their brain will start to function better. Mm -hmm. They'll realize, right, it's not no, 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 actually. It's all about explaining, open up. Why did we do this? What triggered it? You know, what implemented it? What caused it? And sometimes it can be our fault as parents. We can put things, we can say things that we don't mean to say, or we can, we can cause something to happen. We don't intend for it to happen um it's just finding that barrier for them to say look okay mom and dad may have made a mistake here and um, this is how we deal with it as adults and we're going to show you how i don't know it it, it can be dealt with in, in, a, in a more calmer effective you know situation safe and safe environment always yeah, yeah. always because when when she when she gets angry i, I let her cry out and then my arms are open for it to come back and just we we um um ensure her, we encourage her and stuff like that so her feelings so you know she, they're human they they've got feelings if we if we have big emotions they've got big emotions and they don't understand their emotions we understand ours so it's up to us to help them through their emotions I um yeah I'm glad that I'm able to be in my kids' life as much as I am. Um, I'm, um, I'm there with them throughout each step and each step of the way. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, just do your best in life, and just obviously encourage one another and work together, and just have that calm effect. You may say, "Oh, it doesn't work," but when you shout at them, it gets through to them quicker. Yeah. It, I, I can't agree or disagree, but whether it works of shouting at them or talking to them calmly. But I think the best suggestion would be to obviously have that calm effect because. Don't get me wrong, we human, we all get angry for various reasons and it is hard to control that. You want to kick out, you want to fight and then you realise the consequences after. Yeah. But you can't exactly show that to your children. Yeah, right. You can't show that to your children. They may see it in time for you, human. It's just, it's just an instinct. It happens, like quick reactions and quick words. And like, ah, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. But, um, and then you can say to them, Mommy was angry, Daddy was angry. Yeah, you can talk We're to sorry about for it. yelling at you. That wasn't your fault, that was Mommy's fault. And then boom. Because I feel like when you talk to your child, as much as they're young, you speak it in their spirit. They'll pick up things and they'll, they'll learn things and it will stay with them. Because I remember some of my childhood experiences when I was three, four, five years old. So I've just think you know what i want to still in and i'm starting to have good memories of their childhood mm. they may not be able to take it all in at once but they may find one word that you've said in that sentence to them like ah that word stands out mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. i don't get everything you say mom mm -hmm. or dad I don't quite understand True, it yeah. all but that one particular word may have an impact on on that child and um they may learn from it that way you know, um, or a picture might show them something and they're like, oh, I know what that picture's all about now, or a book, you know, um, or a game or an activity. You know, there's lots of strategies and words that kids that age don't quite get and understand. That's why it's important to just, you know, speak slowly with them um, and just talk them through everything that you're doing, vice mm. versa. And, she, and that eventually in the future should develop trust as well because if you are being open and honest with them as they get older and older and older they'll just come to you naturally and say this happened that happened yeah and, and then we'll be like well what did you do about it how, how did you work how did you work on it what can we do next time to improve how do we know you know going forward move on from things like this because there's some things like that stick in their head and it's hard to get out you know, which is negativity, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, 
there's some um, some positive that'll stick in the head and they'll just flourish through it. So uh, yeah, just, just taking your time with your children, showing them, you know, life isn't easy. It's not always you get this, you get that, you get what you want. You know, show them some things that are hard in life where they where they understand. Okay, it's a challenge. It's difficult. If you talk to them about you'll do this, you'll do this, you'll do this, you'll do that, you'll get everything you want, you'll achieve this and achieve that. I think for me as an individual, I made mistakes. So the mistakes I made actually made me a different person today. I realised um, what I did in the past wasn't right, wasn't good, but I've had that experience. Uh, I flipped it to a positive. I'm going to implement it on my kids. So okay, it's all right to crash. Okay, crash, fine. But there is ways around um, fixing things. It's it's what it's down to. Anything can be fixed if you put your mind to it. Yeah, I believe we can be good role models for children. Yeah, of course we can. We're learning. They're learning. Everyone's learning. To be honest, we're we all win. we're all learning. But um, always show your kids love, care, and attention. Whether it's an argument, whether you're just being loved in general. Always approach with the softy soft, nice and nice, and eventually something will just stick out and they'll get it. And um, yeah, happy with that. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Thanks yeah. for um, joining the channel. Um, don't forget, there's the book available, uh, Butterfly Woman Kind of Fly by Christian Silverwood. And uh, yeah, peace out. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>